Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 110, where you send your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one's called Flat Earth Guide. Mark, you mentioned a Flat Earth Guide in your recent Q&A session. You said that you would send to anyone who asked a copy of it. I'm requesting one. This email has been a long time in the making. My story has many parallels to Rob Skiba's. There are exceptions in the fact that I was first disconnected from this reality by the Mandela effect. Well, once I came to believe that, much to my dismay, the thought entered my mind, if this is true, what else could be? So I naturally looked into the moon landings. I quickly discovered that I had been believing a Santa Claus-esque type of story. I've never seen say somebody say Santa Claus-esque. That is totally original. Type of story, much disillusioned. I remember thinking that it, um, if that was also true, all bets were off. So at this point, couldn't still function in my circle. And while being considered eccentric for my views, I wouldn't be ostracized. That paradise collapsed as quickly as one of the mythical supernova of modern astronomy. There in my YouTube feed, suggestions was Flat Earth Clues. After the initial laugh, I caught myself and remembered that the aforementioned bets were off. So I went into it to get info to debunk you. That idea quickly folded like a cheap suit, <laughs> and you debunked my previously held conceptions about my world or plane. I'm sorry for this running so long. I'd just like to thank you for ruining my life. Love you, man. You're my hero. Keep it up. And that's from David. Thank you, David. It's awesome. I don't know if I'm anybody's hero, but you know what? I'll take the compliment. This one's called Object in Moon Crater. Mark, I took these pictures with a Nikon P1000. What do you think? Enlarge the pictures and take a look at the crater. And that's from William. Uh, yeah, I did take a look at them. I don't know. I mean, there may be something in there. Uh, hard, hard to say. Uh, pretty cool. I, I wish somebody else would have taken the same shots you did. Uh, again, you know, not, not that I'm saying you would fake anything. I would never accuse you of, of such a thing, but... Uh, unless we get uh, multiple sources shooting the same thing, eh, which is just a strange anomaly. It could be a camera thing. I don't know. This one's called Survival Guide and OK to Read on Air. Hello, Mark, longtime listener and flat earther. Love your dedication and persistence. Thank you for being an inspiration to many of us to share the truth. I will keep it short and to the point. Please send me the five questions, the 12 picks, the survival guide, and the coast to coast interview. Thank you, sir, and Godspeed, Doug from Nebraska. Uh, yeah, what he's talking about, by the way, are the five science questions that I read during my speech up at the uh, Canadian Conference in Edmonton, Canada. The 12 picks that are from Just Jack, who he says he can convince anyone of the Flat Earth in 12 picks, which you can throw on your phone and show to people. The Survival Guide, which I wrote after Hurricane Katrina, even though I was not there, it really frustrated me that nobody got supplies and prepped anything even after. And of course, the Coast to Coast interviews, which I cannot put up on YouTube because I signed a release form saying that I would not put those anywhere. So out of all the, out of all the people that I've done interviews with, they were the only ones to, to make me sign a release form. And uh, so, yeah, there you go. I, I will send those to you if you want. So uh, if anyone needs them, you can you can ask me for any of these things or all these things. I will shoot them to you. And I also have the National Geographic interview, which is not allowed on YouTube in the United States. I can I can send that as well. So cool. Cool. Let's get to the next one, which is called Tesla car pick. Mark, have you seen this? I saw it on Twitter. And I will describe it for you. It's supposedly, it's a, it's a cool little Photoshop thing where it's supposedly the inside of the giant Falcon nose cone, which seems mostly empty except for the car. And then around, you know, then you've got the blue marble earth kind of behind it in the background. I don't, it's, it's obviously a Photoshop picked because, uh, this was the shot that was released, uh, by the news, except for the, the blue marble thing in the background. Uh, before the launch. So, yeah. And it's weird. It, it, the car looks so much smaller, obviously, because it's, it's taken farther away, but it's a really tiny car in, in real life. Interesting. This one's called Flat Earth. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Richie Klein. For years, I've questioned 
uh, these issues alone with many other issues as well. I do research myself and have self-taught for years in this life of mysterious things that no doubt our government wants to keep secret. I just want you to know I appreciate your videos and your research. Please keep it up. I look forward to watching them all. Have a great day. I would really love to hear any information you have on Antarctica for I as well as many others know there is something there. They definitely don't want us to know. Thanks, Richie Klein. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff on Antarctica. Just go into Google and type in Flat Earth Antarctica. You'll find a whole bunch of content. This one's called Moon Phase Video Marbella, Auckland, New Zealand. Hello, Mark. Look at this footage. Taken today at 1443 south of Spain, Marbella, the exact opposite on a globe of Auckland, New Zealand, and 12 hours further in time, so 243 in the a.m. It is impossible to see the moon at the same time on a globe, and in Auckland, they see the left side of the moon. Maybe you can check if there is any flaw in this explanation to prove we don't live on a globe. The information on the coordinates I got from um, antipodes map uh, common time and date.com for the moon phase hope you can incorporate all footage in one video on the 2nd January of 2019 there is a full big moon phase maybe we can get some flat earthers from Auckland to tape the moon <laughs> like you said tape <laughs> and two at two to three in the morning and I will do the same here in the afternoon and put it as a live feed tell me your thoughts yeah, very, very interesting. And that is uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and the opposite on the si other side of the globe, which is in Marbella, Spain. Uh, experiment can be done pretty easily between those two places. That's really cool. Thank you for that. And that's from, sent by uh, Lorena uh, Ribeiro. Cool. Awesome. Uh, hopefully it pans out. This one's called Obliviousness. Hi, Mark. I thought I would share with you the title block logo for my architectural sheets. No one has ever asked me about it. Two years and counting. To date, none of my drawings have been printed on curved paper. They have always been flat. Thanks for doing such great work. Regards, Ted. And yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure Ted called into Strange World last night. In fact, I'm 99% sure it was him. Uh, and he has an architectural firm called Architectural Element Design and Consulting. And he's got the AE map as the inside of the logo, which is really, really cool. Because again, it's, it's, it's subtle. No one's going to guess that he's one of us. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. I think we already did the moon phase thing. Yep, moon phase is gone. Let's move on to this one called Greetings, Good Fellow. Mark, I am following your progress from time to time in pursuit of of FE or other conspiracies, but I see you are getting no help from the scientific community. No, no, I am, I am not. Here's a question for you, assuming that everything has a price, like they say, and somewhere someone knows something to help debunk or solve one of the riddles at least. What do you think is that extravagant amount of money that will make that somebody jump the fence and yield to temptation? One thing I will tell you, it is not going to be 10000 or or 100000 like some of the naive jokers are suggesting. I suggest you have given this uh, some thought, so please give me a reasonable and realistic number. Thanks and happy holidays, Albert. Um, yeah, I, I know what you're asking there, and that is, you know, we put out several challenges to the scientific community. We've even put money on the table, if if possible, and no one's taking it. Yeah, because what we're, what we're asking them to do is kind of beyond money. Uh, we could we could offer them a million dollars to be honest, and they're probably not coming out. And here's why: they've spent so much time and and money on their education that by the time they get finished, are you really going to throw away potentially throw away eight years of your life? You know, between uh, uh, your po your uh, your basic education and then your post grad work. I, you know, whether you get your master's or your PhD, that's a lot of time, you know, a lot of, a lot of serious effort, huge amounts of effort put into uh, memorizing textbooks and, you know, coming up with your thesis and doing all that other fun stuff. So are they willing to, to put themselves in the line against flat earth the most ridiculous thing ever? Uh, knowing full well that you know, after they listen to some of our arguments, they may not be able to take us down. And again, that's it's I treat it like a boxing match, which is unless you can take Flat Earth down in the first round, you're gonna you're in trouble. 
you're in real trouble because the rest of the community is going to look at you and think you're doing something wrong. And then all of a sudden, if you again, if you do not win the fight, or even if it's a stalemate, a draw, you are going to be labeled by the scientific community as an idiot. And that, that sticker is not coming off. Who's, who's willing to put themselves out there for that? Not many people. Uh, you'll notice that during the scientific things we do, even the thing that National Geographic put out a couple weeks ago, which was, yeah, they talked to a, a guy from, I think it was Caltech, an astrophysicist, but he wasn't, a flat earther was not in the room. I'm sure that was a condition that was, he was willing to talk to uh, the, the National Geographic, but not when anybody from the flat earth community was anywhere around him within earshot. Uh, it was completely separate from us. Meanwhile, we did our stuff against a, a rinky-dink uh, debunking group down in out, out of the Salton Sea, and that turned out oh so well because they National Geographic, they shot us for three days. Three days we, we shot footage with them, and they used less than... I mean, they cut almost everybody out that they talked to except for myself and Lucy Lemons, and they only used maybe five minutes of my stuff, maybe, if that. And I, I've got hours of footage with them, and all my debunking points were removed. So, this one's called, Hey, is it true you won't do a show about this huge budget? Dude. Really? Dude? Do the math of what is listed in the first paragraph, including the supplemental, supplemental fund too. And it's a story called, How a Dollar Spent on NASA Adds $10 to the Economy. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Uh, 1 1.5 billion U.S. dollars per day is generated by them. Mm -hmm. uh, flat earthers uh, like to be aware of perspective. $1 million in $100 bills is three, three, some, three miles high. $1 billion in $100 bills is higher than the Empire State Building. Wait. Now he's got that wrong. Three feet high. One million dollars in one hundred dollar bills is three feet high. One billion is higher than the Empire State Building now. Whether you discuss this news is another story. Good luck and God bless. Supplemental fund is passed by Congress. Good luck, Mickey. Uh, P.S. Please don't use my name. Yeah, nice that you would put that at the end. I don't know if you're joking or not. I'm not going to use your last name, obviously. Uh, but yeah, there's an article out there called How One Dollar Spent on NASA Adds Ten Dollars to the Economy. And that's just propaganda put out by NASA to, so that the congressmen will pass it through and they'll give them $20 billion a year for doing nothing except creating space fantasy. Awesome. This one's called Flatter Steph Curry on the Dan Patrick Show. Mark went ahead and provided the link. If able, play it on the email show. Super logic ahead. Dan Patrick, a sports commentator, was commenting on Stephen Curry moon denial. Eventually, he brings up Kyrie because, obviously, I found it remarkable his choice questions and statements after deciding that Kyrie was trolling. Where's the edge? Do they drive cars and leave them there? Did someone find the town and put up a sign for that says, don't go here? Ironically, Dan, yes, Antarctic Treaty, ice boats and cranes and icebreakers carrying uh, your own poop in a bag for days. Dan has logic, but little knowledge. And that's from Virgil in Traveler's Rest. Yeah. yeah. Again, lots of sports commentators jumped on the Steph Curry thing, and, he, and it would because Steph Curry is one of the top five basketball players in the world. He's won two NBA MVP awards. He's won multiple rings. And he's only 30 years old, and he comes out on a podcast and says, yeah, he doesn't believe in the moon landing. Again, why sports people more than most? Because sports people have a lot of downtime when they're doing road games, especially basketball and baseball. Football, yeah, they have, what, eight, nine road games. But basketball and baseball, oh, they got tons of road games. They are traveling constantly. And they, uh, when they're doing that, they have a lot of downtime. And so, you know, yeah, you can watch some television, but lots of people watch YouTube because it's faster. And they share YouTube stuff because they're sitting next to everybody. And, you know, say, hey, man, did you check out this video? Hey, did you check out this video? And eventually you're going to go into the conspiracy rabbit holes. And that's where, especially since he was teammates with Draymond Green, who is a flat earther and was agreeing with Kyrie Irving. So... Uh, well, we'll see where the Stephen Curry thing goes. Uh, will his sponsors get to him? And and don't forget that he recently uh, was in a conversation. I don't know if it was face to face or if it was just Instagram with uh, Scott Kelly, the retired United States astronaut, and apparently Obama also called him about the flat Earth thing. So very very interesting. 
This one's called Truer, Truth or Comedian Owen Benjamin on Moon Hoax. Yep, he started up on this. Uh, and this was sent by Bill, so thank you to Bill. Uh, Mark, Owen Benjamin is a truther comedian who not only has been a guest on InfoWars, but has hosted the fourth hour a couple of times. He has gone public about being a moon landing denier, and in the queued up clip here says he is more open to flat earth people since we think outside the box. You might want to drop your welcome paragraph there. I did your I did post your email and phone number to get Owen to contact you for an interview or guest on Strange World. I found this video because it was on Patricia's like video list. Uh, Bill. Yeah. Uh, Owen, Owen Benjamin, I, I've been, in fact, he's done a bunch of rants recently. Uh, he does a bunch of podcasts. He can do a live podcast and get 3,000 people live in the blink of an eye. He's got a couple hundred thousand subs and he's notably anti-Hollywood. Uh, it's very, very interesting, some of the stuff he's saying. Now, is he a flat earther? No, he, he, he's not going to put that label on himself yet. But if you're anti-moon, you're, you're, you're one step closer. This one's called International Space Station. Hi, Mark. Just wondering if you could clarify some things about the ISS. By the way, in your video, you indicated that there was no longer any support trips being made to the ISS. When did I say that? It, I, sport trips, they, they're claiming they're, hap they're happening all the time, but I never would have said that. But the story is that there are other nations with space programs who are transporting crew and supplies to the ISS. Naturally, I, re naturally I realize you don't believe it, uh, but at least if you're aware of the official story, people will know at least you did a little research. Yeah, I've never said that they, they, they haven't claimed. Now, if, are they thinking of selling the ISS eventually? Yeah, they've talked about that for years. Uh, but my questions relate to your idea that the ISS is an up there and the supposed relative ease with which a common man could detect it. I didn't say that there was nothing. Again, putting words in my mouth, that's one thing. You got to listen to all my content. Uh, I said there's something up there. I said there's no people in it. For example, it's only two, around 250 miles high and it's visible briefly from many parts of the earth as it passes overhead at 17,000 miles per hour. Yes, I agree. Uh, NASA provides a chart of when and where to look in order to see it go over and says it's the third brightest object in the sky being superseded only by the sun and the moon. I don't know if that's true. Uh, if, in fact, people on the internet seem to be posting pictures and videos of it clearly seen through telescopes. Well, they're not very clear. Look at those pics again. But even if you said that it was just a projected image, I also didn't say that, the ISS still has radio transmitters on it and ham radio operators can and do relay messages off the ISS's repeaters as well as carry on voice communications with the people of the ISS. Oh, okay, so you do believe there's people up there. Fantastic. That means we are completely at odds. Uh, and with directional antennas, it can be determined that the ISS is also an actual radio repeater, not just a project projected image. Never said it was just a projected image. Uh, what is your take on that? If you were to see it through a telescope or take part in a two-way com radio communications with it or track its position with a radio direction finder, would that cause you to consider it was there or what would be your response to that evidence? Thank you very much, Jesse. And I just responded to everything you, you just put out there. Uh, you made some huge assumptions of what I have said and I challenge you to find me the audio to that effect. Uh, sorry fail. This one's called U.S. President's Moon Montage Video. Hi, Mark. Heard you talking about a President Moon Montage video that was out there, but I can't seem to find it. Is it possible for you to point me in the right direction? Or if you have a link, that would be awesome. Thank you, Vince. Uh, no, I don't have it in front of me. It was, In fact, that link was sent to me by somebody else in the Flat Earth community, uh, but it's, it's really fun. So if you get a chance, somebody out there, find it for me, please, and send me the link, and I'll download it, and I'll add it to my things for, or maybe I'll just put it at the beginning of one of my Strange World episodes so it's up there permanently, which is like every president has talked about going to the moon. I, I love it when people will come to me and say, oh no, we're absolutely going back to the moon. Uh, Trump said so. It's like, yep. And before that it was Obama and before that it was Bush and before that it was Clinton and before that it was the other Bush. I mean, it literally going back to freaking Reagan in his second term. Every president has talked about that we were going to, you know, oh, our space program is going to do wonderful things. We're going to go to the moon. We're going to go to Mars. And they, we never do it. We never even, we never even start the program. So you would think that, you know, multiple administrations, somebody would have started the program. I mean, even today, uh, I, I hear that, oh yeah, the United States, Trump has said, oh, we're, we're going to put a moon base. Really? 
How are you going to do that exactly? How how exactly? Because you can't fake a moon base. I'm sorry, it's too tough to fake now. Uh, the te- the detection technology of the internet of the social of social media platforms is too fine tuned. It, it's it's just too much. You cannot do it, which is why we're not there. They're they're terrified of trying to fake it. Same thing with the Elon Musk. Remember, Elon Musk and and 2018 is just about to wind down here in just a couple of weeks. Elon Musk said back in the beginning of 2017 that he was going to send two tourists around the moon. And then he kicked that can, can down the road. And, and now he says, no, I, I now I've got a Japanese investor and, and the Japanese investor. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take like eight or nine artists. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, sending a capsule, faking a capsule is one thing. But if you're taking nine people, that's a whole space shuttle. And the space shuttle program has been mothballed for years. It's gone. A lot of people don't know that either. That was quietly put to bed, put in the attic. So where, where do you, how, how are you going to pull that off? Yeah, nobody's going to the moon. Nobody's going to Mars. Nobody's going to the moon. We're not putting people anywhere because it's too tough to fake. Period. End of. But thank you, Vince, for, for asking. Hopefully somebody can find that montage for me again. I, I probably should have saved it the first time. It was pretty clever. This one's called Students Looking to Interview a Flat Earther. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. We are a group of French students who came across your YouTube channel and found it very interesting. We would really appreciate it if you could answer a few questions since we were working on a project on the topic of flat earth for school. We will have no judgment at all on your convictions and we will not try to argue with you. We simply want to hear a flat earther's point of view. If you have time to answer our questions, I will send them to you in the next email. Thank you very much. And that's from Elsa, apparently in France. And yeah, I'm pretty sure, did I respond to her? Yep. Yep. I did. And I haven't heard back from yet from Elsa. I, I usually put that in my to do, to do pile. And, but normally I wait for the, the, the reply on that. Uh, but hopefully I will be talking to some French students. This one's called veteran 737 pilot video video view and like numbers are off. Hello, Mark saw something strange while watching your veteran 737 pilot video, took a screenshot, see attachment. Notice the views versus likes. So more likes than views. Seems YouTube is fudging the numbers. Keep up the good work, Crystal. And this is strange because Crystal sent this to me and it was the subject matter expert shot that I did, uh, uh, the the title of the Strange World well it's not even a Strange World episode it's called Veteran Seven Thirty Seven Pilot Grounded for Flat Earth Comments and I don't know if she's viewing a different thing that I'm viewing because the views it's about one hundred thirty thousand views which is about right um, one sixteen hundred thumbs up two hundred thumbs down also about right eighty something percent and then about almost eighteen hundred comments all everything looks looks pretty good on this side so if anybody else sees that if they if they go to that video and uh you you see something different i don't i don't know what she's unless unless she's reading it wrong and thinks that 1.6k is a different number maybe she maybe she thinks that 1.6k is not one uh 1600 maybe she thinks it's 1 million i, I don't know or hundred thousand. don't know crystal but uh, look at it again looks looks perfectly fine on my side this one's called On Air Readable Intro Vortex Co- Coil South Only 12 Slides and Any Other Easy Links. Hi, Mark. Kurt here from Calgary, Canada. I'm 38 years old. I'm a solar store manager, off grid systems installer uh, on you. Oh, Kid Kinen, K D K I N E N on YouTube. I arrived at Flat Earth through my electrical experiments with oscillator circuits and Tesla magnifying transmitter three coil LC resonant systems, but that's not directly the reason. Looking through YouTube at Eric Dollard interviews, who I believe to be living in North Tesla of today, uh, I came across one where supposedly a seemingly normal looking guy called up Eric and somehow or another in the conversation, the caller brought up flat earth. And the fact that he even called himself a flat earther was the most absurd thing I ever heard. The thought of calling someone of that magnitude with all the electrical questions I'd have and just blowing it big time like that. Uh, I, yeah, I'm sorry, he's tra- he trails off here with some of these sentences, a lot of dot, dot, dots. Uh, at that point, I was on to hack on the poor guy, tell him how unscientific he was with a NASA pick of the ball and make myself sound like a self-proclaimed expert with old rhetoric. But then, like the movie Inception, that idea took hold and I could not accept the fact 
that there was still today with all the advancement, all the tech, all the space history with my love of Star Trek, etc. How could there be anyone who believed it to be flat? All the images, all the mainstream scientists, all the grandmas and grandpas who witnessed it. Yeah, that's about that's true. Also, uh, I I got to do a sidebar here, which is though that's the only people right now are grand grandparents that even remember the, the moon missions. Look, guys, I'm I'm older. I'm fifty, and this uh, the the whole flat Earth thing uh, is is fair, relatively new. But I'm not even old enough to remember the moon missions. The moon missions were when I was born. Uh, so you've got to be in your 60s and 70s before you uh, have any direct response to to um, uh, even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's a huge moon champion. Uh, he was only like 10 when the moon mission started. So anyway, sorry, uh, that normal guy in modern times who had seen all those images and supposed proof uh, of the balls I had said he was a flat earther. That was a year and a half ago, and now I could virtually... Take virtually any person from any background at any age and carefully break the news to them in a psychological way that the earth is flat and all the science to prove it. I am responsible for having woken up my parents, some co-workers, and a few friends and not believe anything necessarily, but to be aware of the honest science truly in agreement with the flat earth and the clear disagreement with the globe. That's my story. Uh, vortex coil experiment showing south only on the electrical side I have many videos of my work but uh, one experiment I have done but not on video mainly because I did not see it in the past was with using a donut spiral shaped and wound transformer coil called the Rodin coil today named after Marco Rod Rodin Rodin um, a guy who was into numerology who came to have discovered what he called the mathematical fingerprint of God I believe he called it anyway, with a simple jewel thief circuit connected and oscillating the transformer and a soft iron core placed in the center while red with a polarity tester, it, re it reads a south pole only. And as we know, opposite polarities attract, so south would attract the north needle and a compass anyway. Now the question is, if there is a readable pole, then there must exist an opposite pole. However, this cannot be found at any other point in space around it or the coil of the opposite end of the iron core. One answer is that either a monopole kind of singularity or that the opposite polarity exists in counter space. Some have called it as it cannot be found within the, the dimensions of what we call reality. Anyway, keep on keeping on, Mark. You and your work uh, has and continues used to help me greatly from the canadian southwest of the known plain best regards kurt p.s please include the 12 slides as i've always been curious and anything else you think is quick and easy to send my way thanks so much cool and i did and hopefully he got everything this one's called flat earth question mark thanks for uploading your videos do you have any footage that you think proves undeniably that the earth is flat thanks amir uh no no, we don't. Again, I have said many times, is there any one magical bullet that kills the globe? Nope. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you really have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model. Uh, and, and it's really kind of death by a thousand cuts or a shotgun pattern approach where uh, flat earth is, is, is hits people in such a broad spectrum. Yeah, you might be able to stop two or three things or four or five things. I don't know. But you're not going to stop all of them, not by a long shot, and that leaves you with the flat earth, which is why it keeps resonating uh, further and further out. Mostly because, and you guys have heard this from me before, flat earth is now easier to explain than the globe model, than the solar system model, than the heliocentric model. Heliocentric model requires geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum physics, quantum mechanics, and so on and so on. Um, the flat earth model doesn't need any of that, really. Algebra, maybe a little geometry if you're talking about the dome, but the rest of it's easy. The rest of it's just mechanical. In fact, I'm really surprised mechanical engineers haven't jumped on this a lot more and, and, and said, oh yeah, it's totally feasible. Moving on, this one's called National Geographic. Hi, Mark, you said that there was days worth of footage alongside the National Geographic team, including the balloon experiments. Would it be possible to upload these balloon experiments onto YouTube so that we, the Flat Earthers, can embarrass them like they try to embarrass us? Oh, and please may you send me the survival guide. Kind regards, Adam, 
from planet Mars. I mean, Wolverhampton, England. And yeah, okay, so first off, and, and the reason why you missed it and lots of other people missed it, and you guys can look it up at any time you want, is that National Geographic took so long to release the footage. Remember, they shot us at the end of August, and they just released the show, the, the, our segment, in December. So that's quite a while. And in the meantime, we uploaded tons and tons of stuff. So all you have to do is go into YouTube or Google and type in Salton C, that's S-A-L-T-O-N-C, Flat Earth or Flat Earth Salton C. And you'll get all sorts of videos from my channel and other people's channels. And the, the people down in California did fantastic tests. We just kept going back. I Talk about masochists. Uh, the, the California team just kept going back to the Salton Sea and other uh, uh, bodies of water and shooting more and more footage. And it was all great. It was all wonderful footage. And we, yeah, and there's hours of footage along those lines. And National Geographic tried to shut us down in less than 15 minutes. And they did a horrible job to where they even wiped out that, you know, the debunkers were there to shoot this balloon footage from the other side of the, the Salton Sea at 10 miles. And they scrapped that footage entirely. I'm not, the debunkers didn't scrap it. National Geographic made it like it never happened. So, and we were all there. Look, it wasn't just a few of us there. We had over 30 people, flat earthers there. We outnumbered the National Geographic team. We outnumbered the debunkers team. We were there in force and we all witnessed it, including me. I was there the entire morning. I was like one of the last people to leave. It was a long, long day. And uh, it was totally, um, uh, it, everything was in our favor. But again, the power of editing. You can edit any way you want in National Geographic. Uh, condemned us and yet didn't exactly uh, show themselves in a good light either. This one's called Flat? Question mark. Dear Mark, let me introduce myself. I am Lilla, Lilla, Lilla from Hungary and I live in a quite strange phase of my life. I hope it is not late to really get to know the world we live in because I am fed up with the lies and that are poured onto us. It started with history and banking system, the legitimate cheaters, and then 9-11 and all the rest, and now came this one. I did, by the way, I'm not doing a, a Russian accent on this because it's a woman. I, it, it just throw the whole thing off. I've only recently started to think about the earth, and I hate that people think I'm crazy when I try to express my feelings and thoughts about this. At Christmas, I'm visiting my parents who would like to make my coming out. I would like to open my father's eyes, whom I love so much. I think it will be a tough one. He has always been religious, but he is also a math and physics teacher. What do you think I should tell him not to frighten him, not to make him think he has been blind until now? Thanks a lot in advance and Merry Christmas to you. All the best, Lila B. And yeah, so it, it, the first things I would show, I, there's three things I would show them. Uh, first off, if, if they're brand new to it, and especially if it's a math and physics teacher, I would show them the... Uh, the documentary behind the curve. Everybody I've talked to and and all the audiences I have been in, if you are brand new to, if you haven't even, if you don't know anything about flat Earth, Behind the Curve is a great documentary for you. Now, if you're into flat Earth, if you're a hardcore flat Earth fan, you're not going to like Behind the Curve very much. But it's probably a good watch just for reference. Uh, after that, I would show them the flat Earth shortlist for new people. That's a playlist on my channel, which I recommend for anybody. It's a, it's a great compilation of different videos, and I try to update it on a regular basis. And then, of course, the Flat Earth Clues, which is my narration of you know the introduction to Flat Earth. That's what I would throw at these, these people. Moving on. This one's called Slides, Questions, and Clues. Good morning, Mark. Can you please send me the 12 slides and the five debate questions, please? Also, I listen to your clues throughout the day on YouTube, but can no longer do so because my employer has installed a cell blocker. I was hoping that you had the audio files of all your clues so I can still continue to listen to them. Thanks, Mark. Keep it flat, brother. Yeah, I do have the audio files somewhere, just the audio files, and you know what? I will put this in my to-do list, and I will send it to them. Don't, I don't want a lot of people asking me for audio files, because you can listen to this on Truth Frequency Radio, and, and I think most people have the ability to listen to this stuff on YouTube, uh, but I will send this guy the raw audio files. Um, so, there you go. This one's called Celebrity Flat Earthers. Hey, Mark, just call me Mr. B., I think this is my fourth time writing to you, and as always, I want to thank you for all you've been doing for the community. I'm still not 100% on board. I just can't get past satellites. That's fine. 
I understand there's a high altitude program, but I'm just not buying it. That's being that being said, I've been following this movement since 2015, starting with Eric's video and then stumbling onto your stuff. Now I can't, I just can't get enough of it. I'm always looking for that last piece of the puzzle that will bring me to that point of confirmation. My job allows me a lot of listening time, which I mostly spend listening to your YouTube videos. I have to say, I listen to your videos at least three to four days a week. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I'm pretty much well knowledgeable about your flat earth journey. I remember when you had a few private functions with high level celebrities. I know you can't mention names, but these celebrities not only have money, but accessibility and power. As much as you're meeting with them and confirm their belief in the flat earth, could any of them confirm hearing whispers of other high-level persons that maybe have seen the barrier or spoken to high-level or military or NASA employees that confirm the faking of globe earth? No, not yet. Uh, I mean, celebrities do hobnob with other celebrities, but science celebrities and regular celebrities I mean, high, you know, high-level military scientists, they don't really rub elbows with anybody. So it's going to, its I know what you're asking there. It's a, it's a tough call. I just find it so weird that celebrities with all the money and power wouldn't at least try to prove the deception. Yeah, it, you know what? If I gave you $2 million, tell me how you would prove it. Uh, in fact, that's a challenge. Anyone that's writing in, if I gave you, in fact, screw that, $10 million. If I gave you $10 million right now, how would you, what would you use that money on to try to prove Flat Earth? Let me know. I think that's a great challenge. Uh, maybe fun. Oh, here we go. Maybe fun an excursion to Antarctica through possible high level access with all that kind of money and power. They wouldn't need to do it themselves. Oh, well, yes, they would. Uh, they could hire others to do it for them. Sorry for the rambling. Looking forward to hearing your response on your show, Mr. B. And yeah, that's that's the big thing. When you it, it kind of works itself out naturally uh, in their favor, which is. If you have a whole millions of disposable income, you also have millions to lose. Are you willing to throw that money away? Are you willing to risk that money knowing that the government might take it from you? Remember, it's all electronic now. It's not like you've got uh, people have $10 million sitting in a safe at home. It's all just digital. And that, that means the government can freeze it at any time. They can suspend that money. Everything, it's not like the old days. So are you willing to put that money at risk? Most people aren't. Just saying. But I, again, I think the challenge is, is a pretty good one. If you had $10 million, think creatively. How would you prove Flat Earth? This one's called Hey Mark. Mark, I thought of you about 11 minutes into this. I figured out why not share it. Ignore the reference to spinning universe and planets, obviously. But it's very interesting. Watch Divine Imprint, Semantics, and Sacred Geometry, Ancient Knowledge on YouTube. Cool. I will right, we'll check that out. This one's called, Is Strange World Off for the Holidays? Mark, just wanted to know if you were taking a Christmas break. Happy holidays to you and your family. Please use the FE thumbnail. It looks like a Christmas ornament. If you like it, take care. And that's from Jack Frost. And I keep, every time I hear Jack Frost, I think of Deacon Frost from the first Blade movie, who ended up dying at the end uh, after he became the blood god. I know, movie references, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, strange world, uh, cause next week is, yeah, str Tuesday falls on the 25th and yeah, by the time I get to my show, remember mine starts at uh, seven o'clock at night Pacific, uh, my Christmas will be pretty much over cause it's very, very small. None, I don't have any niece nieces or nephews and my sister didn't have kids and I didn't have kids. So Christmas is getting smaller and smaller every few years to where I think there's only like four of us now and the rest of us are, are spread out, uh, through Arizona and California and the East Coast and and uh, yeah we don't we don't get together anymore. We used to have big family things back in the day, not anymore. So yes, I will be doing a Strange World episode live, and uh, I will be doing it Tuesday. This one's called Flat Earth Shadows, Asheville, North Carolina. Hello, Mark. Okay to read on air. Long time Flat Earther since 2015. I know, right? All of three years ago. Thought it was concave back in 2011, but now I know better. I'm 28 and live in Western North Carolina. I was hoping you could send me all the date links to Coast to Coast and other guides. Also, I just watched uh, Strange World 175 and heard there was a meetup in the spring in 2019 in Asheville, North Carolina. Thank you for all your work in finding the truth. Hope to see you, see you there. Sincerely, Outlawed. Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, wow, he was really good about hiding his name. And let me see, did I respond to him? No, I didn't respond to him. So I got to send him the stuff. And yeah, I, I don't have any of the dates for the uh, 
uh, the thing in North Carolina. It, generally, you're not going to see a lot of, of, of stuff until January rolls around. Remember, we're still in 2018. We haven't even started 2019 yet. So uh, once 2019 kicks off in January, we'll, we'll get all the dates to everybody and we'll, we'll get the ball rolling. This one's called Gutless Basketballer, Paul on the Plane in Australia. Mark, it seems that the weakling ball player has chickened out of his statement about the moon landing. It seems a whole lot of pressure may have been applied. Possibly the prospect of financial loss was a factor. Never mind standing by your word and having integrity. I'm not a basketball follower and know very little about the game. Well, yeah, because he's in Australia. However, I'm sure he's made enough money to retire and has no more money concerns uh, and still has his credibility intact. Remind me of reminds me of Judas. I would rather be penniless and my word being my bond. But sadly, that is the way of the world today and makes me lament. Perhaps I am too hard. I'm making a judgment at the same time. I am not condemning him. Maybe a lashing or two would go well. Joking, of course. I brought up the topic of flatter with my with my eldest son, noting, knowing he is against big pharma and vaccines. After exchange of evidence that he could never answer, always changing to another point. He told me he was worried about my mental state. So if you don't hear from me again or take a while to write again, I may be having trouble getting out of the straitjacket. Regards, Paul Crespi. Yeah. And, and he's referring to Steph Curry. Now, Steph Curry's he's backpedaling, but I don't know if he's backpedaling entirely. Remember, you also get a don't forget that once you break out of the matrix and once you take the, the red pill, you can't really go back. So you can say what you want, but it's still in your head. It's not like he's walking around going, yes, it's a globe. It's a globe. And trying to convince other people. Uh, kind of like Shaquille O'Neal. Remember, Shaquille was making $20 million a year in endorsements. Even now. He hasn't been playing basketball for a long time. And uh, all it takes is one sponsor to call his agent and say, yeah, we're going to pull your $2 million contract. Or, you know, it could be in the contract. The, there's <clears throat> there's behavior thick clauses in the contracts nowadays where you can't go, off, go out and do a whole bunch of cocaine and start shooting up a, a shopping mall or something like that. You've got to, you've got to, they can, they can, they can kill that contract because of your behavior outside of the endorsement itself. And I think Flat Earth actually might, it's kind of a gray area. It might actually fall into that. So this one's called, turns out NASA creates posters for every space mission and they're hilariously awkward. <clears throat> so if you go to boardpanda.com, there are space mission posters. And they're all terrible. That was sent by Kurt Moore. This one's called National Geographic. Hi, Mark. I would I would mind I would mind a link to the National Geographic piece. I haven't watched TV in like 25 years. Uh, so thank you, Carolyn. And uh, yeah, I sent her the internet link. Uh, just all you have to do is type in Flat Earth National Geographic and uh, into Google. You should be able to find the link to the piece that's on the National Geographic uh, website. If you can find it for whatever reason, yes, I will send it to you. Uh, if you're outside the United States, you'll, you can view it on my channel. I actually put it up on YouTube, but you can't view it inside the United States. But if you're in the US and you want a copy of it and you can't find it for whatever reason, send me an email and uh, I'll just shoot it to you through WeTransfer. I have a, I have a lower res version that runs about 300 megs. This one's called Answer Me Please. Okay. Mark, I apologize. I can't get to the show very often, but love and support what you're doing. It pisses me off that I can't get to the show except in, in binge mode to try to hear my emails. Yeah, that's a little egotistical. What can I say? Anyway, help me out here. Please, whether you read this online or not, please answer my email. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had a flash tonight watching the clues for the billionth time regarding looking for GPS tracks. Something occurs to me. Nothing is crossing these oceans. Your words. Okay, I live paycheck to paycheck. A lot of America does. But still, the FE movement has gotten a lot of steam and a lot of support. Some of it surprising. Here's the deal. Is there a well-heeled believer out there? Well-heeled, well-heeled. If not, like Jaronism's laser, is there enough of us to pull this off? Even if we're not on board, is there enough of us to make this rental with pilots? Rental with pilots? 
Here's my thought. Rent a plane in Sydney or Johannesburg or Sao Paulo. Fly it direct to one of the cities on your Southern Hemisphere list. That takes out the BS of direct flights that don't exist because we're making our own. It gives us lots of data regarding miles, time, speed, and the empirical data to prove our point. Mark, it's an easy way to prove the long haul. If you want me to show, show up at a convention and present the idea, I will. I'm not a public speaker. Don't want to do crowds. But if we need, if we need me to speak passionately on the subject, I'm game. If I need to raise money for this, I'll whore myself out today. I'm a male over 50, by the way, so the logistics on that may be may constitute an extended period to raise the cash. Um, this is a way to prove our theories. Eh, not so much, but I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Hasn't anyone seen else seen this? Yes, we have. It doesn't take a flight across Antarctica that can't be made. It doesn't take getting shot down. Uh, it just takes flying from point A to point B. No stops or detours. I know there's jets that can make this distance. There's crews that can handle the time in the air. Why hasn't anyone proposed this before? They have. Geez, I hope to hear from you soon. By the way, I was in Vancouver, Washington when I mailed before. Now I'm in Anacortes. Oh, a lot closer to you, brother. We got to get some coffee or a brew somewhere. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Yeah, Anacortes was where I would take the ferry uh, from time to time to... Um, sail up to Victoria, where I lived for a year with a lovely flat earth female. So uh, yeah, when it comes to, you gotta, here, here's the thing everyone keeps forgetting. And that is if you're going to try to uh, book your own flight and by that, you know, hire a pilot and a plane and the whole nine yards and spend a couple million dollars doing it. That pilot is still going to be a slave to the GPS system. The GPS system, which was designed by the United States military in the 90s, it's a DOD system all the way. So uh, he, whoever this is, I mean, the, the GPS system is going to tell you what it wants to tell you. You're going to have to find a pilot that will ignore that. That's the tough part. Uh, remember, the, the GPS system, it works for the system. It is a military system. It, not only will it tell you where you are, but it will tell you where it wants you to think you are. While you're going from state to state, that's not a big deal. But if you're flying over big oceans, yeah, that's where the algorithms come into play. Think about that for a while and then write me back. Let me know. <clears throat> this one's called No Subject. Dear Elon... Oh, it's... <laughs> okay, this is a, a, a letter written to Elon Musk that I was carboned on. Dear Elon Musk, your Tesla ro Roadster was brilliant. The way we could see our stunning ball-shaped Earth in the background, you nailed it. Those silly flat earthers don't have a chance now. We have them on the ropes like Muhammad Ali. Wait, was this... Wait, was this... This isn't Elon Muskhead? Oh, I'm sincerely sorry. I meant Mark Sargent. How rude of me. Uh, I have to correct your English just a bit, good sir, because here in America, we speak American. Uh, you say Connecticut. Others say, con oh, uh, you say Connecticut. I do not. I say Connecticut. Uh, others say Connecticut. I say Arkansas. You say Arkansas. Uh, I say Kansas. You say <laughs> can Kansas. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, Mark, if you want to shoot a flat earth Illuminati card my way, because I have, oh, please. There's only, I, I only had one flat earth Illuminati card. I gave it to Patricia Steer. Uh, that, so no, I am not. Thank you for sending your mailing address, but those are tough to come by. If you have any doubt, look up on eBay and try to find a, a flat earth Illuminati card game thing from the 1990s. Uh, if somebody else finds me one or finds one, great, fantastic. But no, I don't have any. I, I don't even have one here. This one's called Nat Geo and our lack of globes. Oh, let's end on this one because this one looks like it could. It's a little bit longer. Uh, Mark, don't mention my last name, please. Would you please send me a link to download the National Geographic Salt and Sea piece? I watched Jaren's live feed with Rob Skiba, and now I'm curious to see how the whole thing was presented to the public. I feel is getting to the point that unless we step up our game, they are going to continue to use our apparent collective failures to further indoctrinate the masses, which will make our task of persuading people to open their minds, investigate Flat Earth, and do their own experiments that much harder to achieve. After watching Jaren's high-profile experiment failure on the Behind the Curve documentary, and I got to stop you right there. He didn't fail. It was that was in editing. Now, should have Jaren rehearsed that experiment before he got you know before he got the first time and the second time? Yes, he should have. But I do not consider his it a failure. It was all in editing. 
uh, as well as those intentionally skewed salt and sea results, I suggest that it would be nice to see a more aggressive attempt on our part to get some positive flat earth experiments into the minds of the public so that we can even score a bit and provide viewers who may be teetering on the edge of becoming flat earthers with a more realistic view of the actual state of our accomplishments towards exposing the truth about our Truman Show, snow globe, still flat earth set on pillars and under the dome. At this point, the those media outlets are simply providing their viewers with a warm reaffirming blue pill designed to keep them on the ball earth side forever. Some of those media outlets with less to lose the Nat Geo might actually report the truth of our positive results if given the chance. Doubt it. I agree that there is no such thing as bad publicity as long as uh, people are talking about Flat Earth, but people don't have the attention span to wade through an impossible number of Flat Earth YouTube videos in order to find the ones which clearly present those positive results like those of F.E. Core, Jaron Campanella, Rob Skiba, and Rick Hummer, for example. I realize that so far we can provide no actual proof of flat earth, but at some point we need to grow a pair and aggressively expose and promote our positive results, which demonstrate no curvature whatsoever at any altitude. We need to aggressively promote our videos, which expose the satanic occult Nazi Nazi origins of NASA and their lies, beginning with the moon landing hoax and ending with the ISS hoax. That would go a long way towards helping create the reasonable doubt, which might cause the ball earthers to eventually see the light. It is evident that debates are not going to do the trick, so we need to focus on hammering them with what we have that are undeniable, repeatable experiments until mass media is forced to admit that we have scientific evidence that which supports our claim of the flat earth and our position that science is great, but scientism is an evil one world religion designed to make us feel insignificant and hide our creator. I'm looking forward to turning on my TV and seeing coverage of hordes of woke flat earthers heading toward NASA with pitchforks and lanterns. <laughs> lanterns? <laughs> Torches, <laughs> lanterns, carrying effigies of Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you for dedicating your life to exposing the truth about the most important hidden reality of all time. Keep it flat, Leon. Thanks, Leon. Uh, no, well, well, well said. Um, look, I think so, things are going great with mainstream media. Um, uh, all publicity, even bad publicity, is good publicity. Actually, I think the, the 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 official saying there is even bad publicity is free. Uh, and th so, yeah, we, we're, we're out there in a lot of different places and, and most of our members are closets for obvious, you know, the emails just keep saying that over and over again. Uh, and even the debunkers that come at us and all the channels that dedicate things against us, they're just, again, it's like shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire from a distance. Oh yeah, it looks like you're doing something, but you're really just making the fire bigger. Uh, but that's fine. We'll, we'll take it. Uh, look, we will hit critical mass. The hundredth monkey effect is a real thing. And eventually we will get there. With that, you know what? Let's end on that one. Uh, that was a that was a pretty pretty positive email. And uh, thanks to everybody that that sent me stuff so far. And I'll get to my to do list this afternoon. And this will be one ten. So um, yeah, send your emails to m sergeant twenty three at comcast .net. That's m s a r g e n t. 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.